Morning, or evening, Grace Brethren. It's great to have everybody back on with us here with a Temperance Awakening and a back with a Black Bear Temperance and looking at our second session here today, helping people with uh, with a smokeless uh, tobacco tobacco uh, conditions. And we're going to be in the Bible today. Of course, we're a very a very faith based ministry. I'm a minister, and so we're going to be looking at some things here about the Word of God that can show us some things here about addictions and about the smokeless tobacco addiction that uh, some may have. <clears throat> and before we get started here, and since we are going to be in the Word of God, we're going to open up here with a word of prayer. Now, Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the of sin. Thank you, Lord God, for all of your many blessings, Father, that you've done for us. For this ministry, Lord God, and pray that you help people, Lord God, those that want to quit uh, this addiction. I pray that you'd help them, Lord God. May they rely on your strength, and may you live through them. And just be with this time. May we uh, see some great things out of your word. May you help hearts and souls. And just help us, Lord, in that fast, that only you can. If there's one lost, pray you convict them and save them. One discourage, encourage them. One back, so claim them. We pray. As we said, just please help our hearts here today, and we'll certainly be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory for it all, because that you alone, for it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. And so, what does the Bible have to say about unwholesome addictions? Well, there are a couple of addictions out there that... Uh, that can be good, like we uh, have that word in the Bible talking about addictions, like the house of Stephanus, they addicted themselves to the ministry. You can certainly be addicted to the ministry. It's a, it's a good addiction to have. You can be addicted to prayer, you know, be addicted to the word of God. And, you know, when you get that addiction, that leads to revival, you know, which is wonderful. But, you know, there are unwholesome addictions. And I kind of like speaking of which is something that we actually point out. Uh, like in our books, like the books that we've written, like about uh, just the general book we have about Temperance Awakening, and then the ones we've written about tobacco and about alcohol so far, is, you know, addiction wasn't always a bad thing, but then, you know, with, like, tobacco and drug and alcohol addictions, it became a bad thing. You know, we have unwholesome addictions now. And so what does the Bible have to say about those things? And we'll start off here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 12. It says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. <clears throat> See, all things are not expedient. All things do not favor us. You know, all, all things are not beneficial you know, to us. And that's, you know, bad addictions like tobacco or alcohol or pornography or, you know, sugar or food. You know, we might think it's lawful, but like it says, that I will not be brought under the power of any, I mean, I will not have any type of bad addiction. I will not addict myself to something that is not wholesome. I will not addict myself to something that takes away my time, you know, that that is not profitable. That's what he means there. Something that is not profitable, that is unwholesome. You know, like especially that's an excuse that people gave at first, you know, and still kind of give like about smokeless tobacco, you know, back like in the 80s. You know, they say, well, you know, this isn't like smoking cigarettes or smoking cigars, you know, there's not smoke. You know, it doesn't, there's, you know, there's no secondhand smoker, you know, that this affects. But though it's not expedient for you, and it's not expedient for the environment either, but it's not good for you. Like it says there, we're not to be brought in the power of any, you know, as Christian believers. <clears throat> then like 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 23, a very similar language here that Paul uses. He says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but... All things edify not. See, in that word edify, that means the act of building up. You know, the act of building something, of course, in the context here of the Bible. That's kind of like figurative language for the act of building up in Christian character. Because, see, it certainly isn't the character of a Christian to have any type of, you know, bad addiction. You know, like tobacco. Because, you know, there are, you know, lots of people who are not, who are not even religious, you know, who are against tobacco. 
like you like I've met a number of people like with the camp like we have you know for starters the campaign for tobacco free kids you know that they're very young people you know very young children you know that are anti tobacco and that's good you know but they're not they're just honestly you know they're not people of faith <clears throat> You know, there are people that are a part of, you know, the temperance movement. Like people who are part of the Prohibition Party and, and you know, like, uh, you know, like the state where I'm a church planner, you know, the state of New York. You know, there's like Smoke Free Tobacco, people that are a part of these organizations, you know, who are, who are not even believers. But, you know, they know that it's unbecoming character for a person to use tobacco. And, you know, to support... You know, the tobacco, you know, the tobacco companies, you know, whenever you buy tobacco, that's exactly what you're doing. You know, you're just putting more money, you know, into their pockets, you know, into their hands. You know, for the, for the, bad, for the bad things that they do, you know, like we, you know, looked at in our first session, you know, whenever we looked at all the diseases and, you know, all the illnesses that, you know, that even smokeless tobacco causes. And, you know, this certainly, you know, does not edify. You know, it's not a good, it's not a good testimony. It doesn't show good character, you know, especially, you know, in front of young people. And then, like, we have First John, chapter number 2. First John, chapter number 2, start reading there in verse number 14. It says, I have written unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. See, we are to be strong as believers. We are to abide in the word of God. You know, we are to overcome, you know, the wickedness of this world. And then in verse 15, where it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You know, plain and simple, you know, we are not to love worldliness. You know, we are not to have, you know, addictions, you know, to things that are not wholesome. You know, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, you know, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. See, that's lust. I know a lot of people, they associate lust, uh, you know, like to, uh, you know, like to people of, you know, like pornography, you know, things like pornography or having an affair or you know, fornication and so forth, and that's certainly lust, but, you know, lust is a desire for anything, you know, that doesn't belong to you. That's what lust, you know, real lust is. You know, anything that you are not to have. See, and you're not to have, you know, that tobacco. And that's not of the Father, but it's of the world. See, and like it says that the pride of life, you know, that's a pride thing. You know, that's even like the slogan for like camel cigarettes, you know, like I know at least was a, a year or two ago. I think they still use that. I see that like at gas stations and so forth. Like it says pleasure or bust. See, it's talking about a worldly pleasure whenever we give ourselves to tobacco. That's of the world. <clears throat> and see that pride there that says, you know, I have to satisfy my flesh to have that tobacco. See, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. See, look at that there. It says, the world passeth away. See, how the Bible says the wages of sin is what is death. Hey, what's the number one preventable cause of death in the world? Tobacco. See, like unwholesome things, what do they do? You know, they kill you. They put you in an early grave. Like, no, you know, doing those things won't send you to hell. You know, people go to hell because they die without receiving Jesus Christ. But, you know, you use tobacco, that'll, that'll put you in an early grave. See, you do what the will of God abideth forever. It's like another good verse coming out of Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. If you're following along in the Bible, which I hope you are, like the book of Ecclesiastes, that's some... Um, that's uh, right after Proverbs and right before the Song of Solomon. Like Ecclesiastes chapter uh, number 5 and verse number 11. It says, When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. 
And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? See, what good does using tobacco do? You know, there's no profit in that. There's no pro that's a habit that has no profit, you know, but bad health and a bad testimony. And that's a good test, you know, for all believers, you know, does this profit me anything? Like I know you can say, well, tobacco may not profit anything, but does, you know, watching television? And that's a good question. That's a good spiritual test. There are lots of things on television that isn't profitable, that's not worth watching, and that's something we're actually going to get to later. Like if you're familiar like with our ministry, like with things that we've already done, like helping people with vaping and, you know, just addictions kind of in general. Like I said, that's something we're going to do here with the Black Bear Temperance, people particularly, uh, you know, wanting help with smokeless, you know, with a smokeless, you know, uh, tobacco addictions. <clears throat> You know, we're going to we're going to offer you and encourage you to do wholesome, you know, to do wholesome activities. You know, replace, you know, tobacco with something wholesome. You know, that's kind of why smokeless tobacco, you know, became a thing. Because that replaced, you know, smoking cigarettes, you know, and smoking cigars, you know, for a lot of people back, you know, like in the 70s and 80s when, you know, it first came around. But, you know, simply, you know, smokeless tobacco certainly is not profitable at all. And as we said, you know, you're just, you know, you're just financially, when you buy it, you're just financially, you know, holding up tobacco companies. You know, companies that kill people, you know, that are dishonest and so forth. Like on Matthew 6.24, Matthew 6.24 it says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. It's like, remember what Paul said, I will not be brought under the power of any, you know, of anything of this world. See, we're only supposed to be under the influence of God, you know, not the influence of anything that's worldly. Like we said there, ye cannot serve God and mammon. See, mammon is another word for money. So you're just serving tobacco companies by all the money that you give to those people by buying, you know, chew and dip and snuff. See, the closer you get to God, the more you're going to hate the things of the world. And I know that's why a lot of you are taking this course that want help. Because you no longer really even, you know, in your spirit, you don't enjoy tobacco. You hate it. You know, you're sick of it. You want to put it down. And, you know, that's the kind of heart that you should have and know that you are serving another master other than God when you partake of it. Like a Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. This certainly should be the goal for all of us to get to here. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world. See, we're just conforming to worldliness by partaking of tobacco. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, renew your mind. That's talking about being in prayer and in the Bible. And we're going to look at a lot more of those things, certainly later on, you know, in the course, not today, but in our future sessions. You know, we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know, you've got to be in the Bible. You've got to be in prayer that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, like we mentioned there, you know, prove, you know, that that's a good a good um, rule of thumb, as they say, with things. Can, you know, can I prove that this is profitable to God? Tobacco certainly isn't. You know, what is that good? Tobacco's not good, and it certainly is not acceptable, and it's not in the perfect will of God. Yeah, now Galatians chapter number 1. Galatians 1.10 For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See, that's pleasing tobacco companies. And pleasing ourselves whenever we partake of tobacco. That's not pleasing to God. We're not being a servant whenever we do those things. Then last verse that we're going to look at here in James chapter number 4. James chapter number 4, looking at verse number 4. It 
James 4.4, 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. See, we're not to be a friend of worldliness like tobacco companies. See, like I said, you could say, talking there about adulterers and adulteresses, you can say, well, I'm not having an affair, committing fornication. Yeah, but you know what you're doing, though? You're cheating on the Lord. You're cheating on God whenever you partake of tobacco. And you know what? You're cheating other people as well. You're not being the Christian that you should be. You're not being the example, the parent that you're to be to your children if you have them. You know, you're not being the example to other people, and a lot of you understand that. That's why a lot of you are in this course. You know, you wanna, you know, quit this for your, you know, for your spouse and you know for your children. And that's wonderful. You should. And one thing that we want to mention here to start doing now in this session is a start a journal, start a quit journal. You know, start a journal and um, you can title it whatever you want to, whatever you're comfortable with, because, you know, I'm a very individualistic person. You know, I believe people are going to, like, quit, you know, these things for, you know, whenever they kind of, you know, also, you know, yes, do them for the Lord and, you know, for, you know, for the benefits, yes, like of other people, like your family and so forth, but also, you know, kind of for yourself, you know, based on you and your personality. But, you know, you might want to title that journal New Beginnings if you want an idea. Don't just call it a quit journal. You can, you can use that terminology if you want to, like quitting tobacco, but how about New Beginnings? Like I'm going to replace this tobacco with something wholesome. I'm going to replace you know, this tobacco with more time with my family, with, with more finances for my family, with for more wholesome things. Think more, I encourage you, you know, think more, ponder more about new beginnings, you know, rather than, you know, rather than quitting something in the past. You know, replace that, you know, with something wholesome. It's actually what we're probably going to be looking at next se at next session. Going to be looking at that. Going to be looking at new beginnings. As I said, go ahead, get your journal ready. Encourage it. Like, go back, look at the verses. You know that we mentioned here, and you know uh, jot those down. You know, certainly jot. You know, um, you know, jot down these verses. Study them. Ponder them. You know, ponder them in your heart. And you know, like I said, start that journal. You know, be yourself as you start that journal. Say, you know, I want to you know, quit because of, you know, you know, your reasons, and I want new beginnings, you know, for my family, you know, be yourself, you know, in that, you know, and be honest, be honest with yourself, be honest with God, you know, if you want to share that with other people, you know, that's yours, you know, that's at your discretion with your spouse or your, you know, your children or whatever else, but, you know, like I said, start that journal, and I encourage you to think about new beginnings, you know, a good life without, a new life without tobacco. And as I said, thanks so much for being with us here and here in our second session, and we'll be looking at more things next time. And uh, we look forward to the next session that we'll have, and we'll see you then. Until then, I reckon the shadows flee away. I'm Dr. Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.